Welcome to our Zen Mobile 10 webinar, uh, Apps and Data on the Go. This is presented by Layer 8 Training. My name is Delana Hurst, and I am a CCI. Juniper databases. <laughs> so I've been uh, kicking around for a while. So about Layer 8, so we are the largest Citrix authorized training partner in North America. So we actually operate all across North America and offer a very aggressive training schedule. So if you're interested in any kind of training, please check out our website. Uh, we have five certified instructors on staff, including two master CCIs. So again, we have a very aggressive open enrollment schedule. We also collaborate with Citrix on uh, course development. I am currently actually working with them on all of their Netscaler courses. Um, very, very strong in Netscaler. We were the very first to offer Zen Mobile training. In fact, that was me. <laughs> I got to uh, be the person who jumped on board for the uh, new Zen Mobile stuff when it was originally acquired by Citrix. So we offer training in VMware, NetApp, Juniper, Checkpoint, Red Hat, and much, much more. We offer uh, very special offers for our webinar attendees. So if you attended this webinar, and you go on to purchase any Layer 8 training five-day uh, class by May 31st of 2016, uh, you get presents. It's like Christmas. Uh, so here you can see you would get, you could choose from either an Apple Watch or a Microsoft Surface 3, an iPad Air 2, or just a 10% discount. So what are we covering today? So this is just a quick look at the new Zen Mobile technology. So we'll do a quick high-level overview I'm going to talk a little bit about Zen Mobile, what MDX apps are, how you can work with them to basically package up your own apps. We'll talk about ShareFile and ShareFile integration into our mobility, and then finally Netscaler Gateway integration uh, into the Zen Mobile product. When it comes to Zen Mobile, okay, it's a mobility solution. Uh, they've improved with Zen Mobile 10, they have massively improved the mobility experience. Uh, for both the user and for IT. Now, we all know that everyone's racing around with uh, mobility at this point. Uh, people want to connect in with their iPhones and their iPads and their other devices to gain access uh, to the environment, whether they're trying to gain uh, full VPN remote access in or whether they just need a couple of applications being delivered uh, out to their devices. Mobile users uh, need to be able to work quickly and efficiently, okay? So, uh, you know, things like authentication needs to occur very quickly before they can, you know, check email. So a lot of what they focused on was in Mobile 10 was workflow productivity, how to allow a mobile user to accomplish the tasks they need in as few steps as possible and in the most efficient manner. So Zen Mobile is the Citrix product that's a way to revolutionize how you're basically working with mobility in your environments. Uh, the beautiful thing about Zen Mobile, and I am a huge fan, uh, Zen Mobile uh, is a complete stack. What it does is not just uh, MDM authentication or not just VPN stuff or not just application management. It does it all. So it's a complete stack for managing and securing all of your applications, all of your data, and all of your devices within the environment. Okay, so let's look at the problems that we have in mobility. First off, uh, you've got to be able to manage and secure data, right? You all hear those horror stories about somebody's laptop at the Pentagon was stolen and it had secret nuclear codes or whatever, right? We know that it's very important that when users are connecting into your corporation to access uh, their information that it needs to be secured. Okay, now Zen Mobile allows you to do both di uh, device encryption as well as authentication within the environment. Okay, we offer app containerization and cloud file services, okay, so that everything is handled in a very secure manner. Okay, we can manage applications with Zen Mobile. Okay, so basically we can push the apps out to their devices so that they have access to whatever their productivity apps are that they need access to. Okay, we control how they're going to access both the applications and how we're going to handle that data for those applications. And of course, we need to manage and control the actual devices themselves via policies. 
So if I needed to ensure that everyone who was connecting into my environment had a passcode on their device, I could certainly enforce a passcode. I could also do things like disabling the camera so that when they were accessing secure financial information, the camera wouldn't work. We can also remotely lock or even selectively wipe a device. And a selectively wiping is very nice. This allows users to keep their own personal stuff on their phones, which they want, right? They want Facebook. They want uh, whatever applications they use every day. Okay, so that are their own personal applications. So we can handle uh, selective wipes on a mobile device, meaning that we just remove corporate information. Okay, or anything that is being managed by Zen Mobile while maintaining all of their uh, personal stuff. Okay, so how does Zen Mobile solve these problems? Uh, Zen Mobile uh, does, we have one server, the Zen Mobile server, the XMS. It does both your mobile device management and your mobile application access and control. Okay, so we have one stop there where we can go in and both handle and enforce our policies for and security for a mobile device, as well as determine what applications are we going to deliver out to those mobile devices. Now we do have the Netscaler gateway component. This allows uh, very nice security as well as remote access for your users. Complete integration with ShareFile so that you can uh, basically put all your data in the cloud or you can set up your own on-premise storage services, depending on how you wanna handle your data. Okay, and storefront, optionally, Okay, if you have HDX resources. So you want to give them access to not only their mobile apps, but you want to give them access to the Zen app apps that they need access to within the environment. So let's take a look at our end user experience. Okay, so users get apps that are optimized for business. We also have a complete works suite of productivity applications. And uh, here we have works mail, which is gonna give you mail, calendar, contacts, Okay, it's very Outlook-like, really easy uh, to work with. Uh, you're going to get Works Web, where you get a browser. You're going to have a unified application store that enables you to run any app, okay, even non-mobile applications. And ShareFile is going to allow you to do document sharing and editing with an Office-like experience. Okay, we provide end-to-end -end security. We're fully compliant with whatever corp your corporate security policies or whatever you need to enforce within your environment. Okay, so IT gets its security and compliance. We can uh, basically use containerized applications. Uh, we get a single line of code, 60 plus policies available, FIPS 142 encryption, single sign-on. We have the uh, Dropbox problem solved, okay, because with how we're handling our data management. We have a full audit trail. We can track who did what, when, where, why. Okay, maybe not the why. <laughs> uh, but we also offer secure access. So when you're accessing through, and this is the gateway piece, you get complete secure access into your environment. We have micro application level VPNs, secure browsers. Okay, we uh, have full certificate coverage within the environment. And of course, we can lock down those devices. So we can manage iOS, Android, Windows, WinPhone. Okay, we can enforce security policies. We can enforce configuration policies as well as access and data policies. So at a very granular level, I can control even how data is being accessed or handled within a particular application. So very low level. Okay, so with uh, Zen Mobile, we have a unified MDM and MAM. We call this the Zen Mobile server. So it's all in one single location. We're gonna manage our apps and devices because everything is all uh, in one unified console. We can do all of our management from a single location. Okay, we have uh, one policy that can be enforced against multiple platforms. So when we go in and write our policy, I can then say, I want this policy, this passcode policy to apply to my iOS, my Android, my WinPhone, okay, whatever it is. Okay, we also have the capacity for app ratings and reviews. So this is gonna help you out as IT because then you'll know which applications users are finding beneficial and which ones they maybe don't even really like. What's actually providing a value add out to your users. Okay, we have APIs for automated administration, power filters, 
uh, make it easier to take the appropriate action within our unified consoles. Um, we do have our MBAS partnerships or our App Accelerator, any presence. We have role-based access control for delegated administration. If you need to have a help desk team to help out with your mobile users, okay, you can assign them the level of permissions that they require. It's easier to scale. Okay, so now with Zen Mobile 10, everything is being managed by an external database. Okay, this is a nice shift from previous versions of Zen Mobile so that now I can just scale as much as I need. Um, so that external database really helps out. We have on-demand Active Directory and global catalog support, uh, simple uh, HA and disaster recovery configurations, unified logging, okay, for event management and monitoring, and API for automated administration. So again, this newer version, Zen Mobile 10, does uh, eliminate a lot of the problems that we were kind of seeing with the previous version where we had separated out the security piece from the application piece. Okay, so it's easier to support. So again, uh, we've offered users a self-service portal, uh, which saves your help desk resources, right? It allows a user to go in uh, and track their own lost device. I don't know what I did with it, to leave it on the plane, um, things like that. They can actually choose to wipe, which is a full wipe, meaning that wipe everything off of their device, including their personal stuff. Uh, selectively wipe or lock a device all by themselves. So if they did leave it somewhere, okay, and they don't think it's going to be recovered, they can actually just wipe everything off um, or just selectively wipe it, get those corporate applications off or lock it. Okay, so this self-service portal saves uh, your support calls by like up to 20%. Okay, we have automated APNS certificate signing. Any of you who had previous versions of Zen Mobile are probably smiling. Okay, if you haven't switched over to Zen Mobile 10, now, when you submit your APNS certificate to Citrix, you're not waiting on a support person to actually go in and manually sign uh, or approve that certificate and send it back. Not that the support people at Citrix weren't awesome, because they were, uh, but now it's all automated. So you can get your APNS uh, certificates for your Apple devices more quickly. Okay, so some of the new features that we have, of course, we have unified management, the new brand new unified console that we have in Zen Mobile 10 makes your life a lot easier. Corporate application stores, mobile application management, okay, unified access gateway and single sign-on capabilities. Uh, we have workflow driven productivity apps. Okay, so there's a lot of different things we can do with our applications down to the point that, you know, you can basically set management approval to get an app. Let's say you have a cloud-based application like Salesforce and people who are not salespeople should not have access to Salesforce. They don't, you don't need to pay for an additional account for them if they're not a salesperson. So you can make sure that before they download and uh, work in Salesforce that they have to have management approval. Okay, so that again, you're not getting into some gray areas though. You also can auto create that account in Salesforce. Okay, another really nice feature is auto provisioning of accounts. If you set up uh, your provisioning parameters around a SaaS app like Salesforce, once they get approval from their management manager, they can get an, an account automatically created for them, single sign-on all set up, okay, and then magically they're just working. So it's really nice what we can do with apps. We have military-grade security, uh, mobile content management, and we have a wide array of devices that we support. Okay, so Zen Mobile 10 has three editions. Zen Mobile MDM Edition, which gives you just uh, device management and app delivery. Advanced gives you everything that the first edition has, plus, okay, you get XMS level app management. So that gives you the more granular control over your applications. So I could literally say when this one particular application is running, then disable the camera. Okay, so you can get very uh, fine-tuned. Uh, we, you also get the complete suite of works apps that are available. Okay, with Zen Mobile Enterprise Edition, you get everything that you had with Advanced, plus you get ShareFile. So you get our full integration uh, into the ShareFile um, as well. So it gives you kind of uh, one-stop shopping for everything mobility. Okay, so like I said, architecturally, they really made a huge shift in Zen Mobile 10. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. I just kind of wanted to show you. Uh, so previously we had separated out both the app controller 
and the device manager as two separate pieces. And that was fine. It worked. But they started to decide that they needed to re-architect it. A lot of what had to do with the database. So with the app controller, the database was maintained locally. Uh, with the MDM, we had an external database, which of course allowed for the scaling of security. But this was a little tougher to scale. Okay, so you can see that there was a lot of overlap between what was going on with these two. So they decided to go ahead and re-architect it. Okay, and basically combine what they could. Okay, so you have a single uh, administrative UI. Okay, we set up all of our authentication in the same place. Okay, here you see you have your store, your application management, your dev management, and an external database. Again, it is a Linux appliance. We are running Tomcat. Okay, our administrative unified console is web-based, so you can very easily access it, get in, create your policies, do what you need to do as an IT person. Okay, and of course, all of your HA and cluster logic. Okay, again, uh, clustering with the app controller was always pretty, pretty nice. Didn't work so well on the MDM side. Uh, well, it wasn't that it didn't work. It actually leveraged in Tomcat's ability uh, to do HA, but it wasn't as clean as it is now. So the Zen Mobile Server, the brand new Zen Mobile Server, which does everything is a single, unified, hardened, Linux-based or virtual appliance. Okay, you get your single administration console, no longer switching between two separate consoles to do your management of your mobility. Okay, it does leverage an external database. However, we still support an internal database if you're doing POCs, right? You just want to go out to your customer site, show them how awesome it is. Okay, you don't need to set up an external SQL server for that. Okay, we have both streamlined and unified authentication. Okay, so all authentication is handled singularly now. You're not setting up different levels of authentication for mobility uh, and another set for your apps. Okay, we also support uh, complete role-based uh, authentication for local users and groups. Those of you who've used previous versions of Zen Mobile know that's actually huge. Not on the MDM side, we always had it, but on the app controller side, you only had the administrator account. That was it. And you could have an administrator account or you could have an administrator account. So again, that's, that's huge. Okay. So here's our architecture. So here, of course, you see, um, now with our single environments, okay, we have our access tier here where we're both handling the MDM functionality, which is our security and the MAM functionality, which is our applications. Then they get into the uh, load balancing tier here where we can go ahead and load balance them between uh, XMS servers because of course, uh, now these systems can handle both the application and the security side. Okay, and we maintain a nice external database so that if I need to add more of these guys right here, we can just keep on adding them. So it scales up really nicely. So the uh, Zen Mobile server uh, in the DMZ IP, we have, uh, the VIP K for MDM, which is a public IP. You can actually enable things like uh, SSL offload. Some of you are starting probably recognizing these terms. What we're talking about here with the access tier and the load balancing tier, this is a Netscaler. The Netscaler is handling all of this. You would have your application VIP out there. Uh, for the applications, we're gonna have our gateway in place. So we have VPN capabilities as people are working with their applications. Okay, and of course the access and load balancing tiers could actually be on the same Netscaler if you wanted. Okay, we also have uh, Zen Mobile Cloud. Okay, Zen Mobile Cloud is a hosted Zen Mobile EMM service where Citrix handles the installation and maintenance of your infrastructure. So we, of course, um, offer this as a service. Okay, and that way you're not in charge okay, of your entire infrastructure and you can go ahead and take advantage of that. So our mobile device management, okay, offers all of the security pieces that you're going to need within your environment. Okay, it's going to go ahead and monitor, uh, decommission, configure, provision, secure, and support the entire life cycle, okay, of your mobile devices. Okay, so what does the XMS do now for us? Uh, now it's going to go ahead and push policies out uh, and enforce them, okay, on those devices. You can auto configure, locate support devices. Uh, you can deploy your internal or third party mobile apps. 
Okay, of course, you can selectively wipe corporate applications and data off. You can block unauthorized or jailbroken devices from coming into your environment. Okay, and we do this by leveraging the APIs that are built into the mobile operating systems. So now you've got, you know, BYOD is becoming a very common thing and it's much, much easier to integrate this now into your environment. Okay, you can uh, integrate it with Active Directory in real time for group-based policy configs. You can deploy over the air out to users. We have help desk functionality, remote support and troubleshooting, as well as very nice monitoring capabilities uh, where I can go in, look at, you know, your app inventory, device status, any compliance statuses that you need to track. Okay, so we also, of course, deploy uh, policies and applications. I could decommission a device if it was lost or stolen. Okay, some common uh, policies you might push, like passcodes or restriction policies. Like I said, disabling installation of apps, uh, only allowing you to use a particular application if you are connected to a corporate Wi-Fi network. Okay, or a VPN. Okay, you can't just do that one over, you know, 4G. Okay, now when it comes to the types of applications we work with, Okay, um, there are native apps, iOS, Android, whatever. Okay, we have HDX apps if you've got Zen app or Zen desktop in your environment or SaaS or web applications. We can work with any type of application. Now we do allow you to work with native apps like Apple apps or Android apps. Uh, and we offer what's called MDX technology. So if you need to make it more secure before you deliver it, okay, you can wrap it up in MDX. Okay, so MDX is actually just a wrapper that allows you then to control your inter-application communication policies and more to granularly or fine-tune what your users are doing with those particular uh, applications. Okay, so users, of course, want to use all of the applications that they know and love, but you need to maintain a level of security. This is where MDX comes in. So when you wrap up applications or you deliver them via MDX, okay, then they are completely contained, completely isolated. Every single application gets its own private data vault, which is encrypted, and you can control uh, data exchange with anything else on the device. So you can go in and you can set up your uh, cut, copy, and paste policies or document exchange policies. So you get complete granular control of all of your inter-application communications. Okay, as well as network APIs, you can say you can access the network or you can't okay, when certain applications uh, are running within the environment. Okay, so like I said, you can go ahead and wrap up applications. Uh, there is a toolkit okay, that you can get. Okay, and when you do your application wrapping, then you have a fully uh, secured application. So you get your encrypted local storage, your micro or application specific VPN, Application specific lock and wipe. I can just lock or wipe a specific application. Inter application communication policies, conditional access policies, okay, an enterprise identity with single sign on. And you don't have to rewrite them, okay? You just run them through our little toolkit. Okay, so if you want to do app deployment, you can download apps from citrix.com. Okay, we have our full suite of works apps, okay, already available for you. Okay, of course you would just then take whatever application it was you were interested, IPA or APK, run it through the preparation tool and you would end up with an application that had the MDX extension. That gives you all of your security. So Works Mail, let's talk about our Works Suite here. Uh, Works Mail, nice uh, productivity email application. Does support ActiveSync, supports iOS and Android. Uh, we have enterprise class security. Very nice native experience, very Outlook-esque shall we say, uh, full inter application integration and it is MDX secured. Okay, so we get some nice things like a triage view. We have simpler navigation within our works mail. Uh, they redesigned the calendar so you can have complex meetings and you can go back a year. Uh, multiple folder sync landscape view is available. Okay, like I said, uh, active sync policy support so you can control those sync settings. Uh, you can limit the email size, you can allow direct push when roaming, attachments to be downloaded, HTML formatted emails, uh, define the maximum attachment size, okay, works mail. We also have fast join and fast dial because I know that everyone is using go to, right, go to meeting, 
<laughs> so uh, you can see here that, you know, I can, uh, from works mail, I can directly join a go to meeting. Okay. I can dial in uh, from my event details, or I even have the option to say, okay, oh, hey, you know what? I am running late. Okay. Which will automatically send a little email to, to everybody on the invite list saying, Hey, I'm running late. You can set your out of office from your mobile phone. Cause I know when you went on vacation, you were in such a hurry to get out of the office. You ran out of there before you set it in Outlook. That's okay. From a beach in Hawaii, you can configure your out of office. Okay. So your time duration, um, and you can do it whether you're inside or outside the, you know, you can send out to everyone in your organization or outside your organization. You can edit events. Okay. Directly through, uh, works mail. Okay. So works mail full feature or where this should say works web. Sorry. I don't know how that typo made it in, but it should say works web. So we also have works web, which is a full featured browser. Uh, gives you access to internal and external HTML5 web applications. Again, full inter-application integration. We also have the capacity to do things like URL whitelisting and blacklisting. Okay, and it does use a micro VPN so that if you are browsing around, you are fully secured. Works notes. Okay, again, supports iOS and Android. Syncs notes to share file. So this is one that actually requires you to have share file. Um, it supports SAML based authentication and it can integrate with exchange works mail. Okay. So that you can go ahead and just take some notes as you go. You are going to have a first time use. It's going to ask you for your share file account. It's also going to ask you for your exchange server so that it can integrate with your uh, calendar. Okay. So once you log in, there's your share file account. Okay. And then you can link notes to meetings within your environment. So here you can see that from works notes, you have complete email support. So once I have a note, um, I could come in and basically say, uh, I would like to send this via email or send it as an attachment. Okay. And there you can see they're sending off those, uh, wild notes. Okay. As a PDF attachment. Um, additionally, uh, you could do things like, uh, with your notes, take a photo, record audio, set a reminder. Okay, nice integration here. Uh, you also have location services. If for whatever reason you needed to remember where you were when you created that note, it could tell you. Okay, again, there's your share file integration. It can automatically sync those notes back up to share file. Okay, we have uh, Share Connect, which is another productivity app. It's a new one. Gives you uh, quick access to your most recent files, local and remote file editing mobile optimized access to company resources. Okay. The account, uh, is shared with share file. We have P2P AES and 256 encryption, and it does rely on go to my PC. So it's basically go to my PC for your mobile device. It's awesome. So I can connect right in. So yes, I'm at dinner. Oh, dang it. I forgot to do that thing that I needed to do. I can connect right into my desktop, make my quick edit and enjoy my dinner. We also have quick e edit which is another new works productivity app. Um, it secures enterprise, uh, mobile, Microsoft office document editing, gives you uh, offline content editing. If you need, you can review comment and collaborate on documents. Okay. And it supports word, Excel and PowerPoint broad range there. We have works tasks. Okay. Another new productivity app. Okay. This allows me to do uh, mobile task management. Okay. Securely. It integrates with Outlook tasks, uh, for Android users, uh, works task syncs with exchange via works mail for iOS users. It syncs directly with exchange. Okay. So when you're setting up your, uh, news and mobile environment, uh, we actually have a nice first time use mode. Uh, again, it's a virtual machine or a hardened appliance. You just boot it up and run through the little, uh, all menu driven. That's a menu driven CLI options. From here, you can set your network settings, encryption, FIPS, your SQL database, whether or not you're going to do clustering. And it kind of walks you through. It's very wizard like in how it's operating. Okay. We have our new unified console, which basically allows you to manage everything from one single location. It's uh, available. Again, this is where, you know, a lot of the Tomcat stuff comes into play. I use a web-based console, so you're going to go ahead and connect to it, but you do need to remember to connect to it on 4443. Once you get into your uh, web console, it's going to walk you through uh, licensing. 
Uh, you do, you can uh, leave uh, the default to try with a 30 day license. Okay, so if you're just uh, want to see how it works and test it out in your environment, you can go ahead and uh, take advantage of our 30 day evaluation period. Okay, if you needed to uh, lock everything down, you can go ahead and import and browse for your certificate files. You can uh, have self signed certs in there. Uh, once you have real certs, you decide you love Zen Mobile, you can replace those uh, self signed uh, certificates by certificates issued by a public CA. Okay, you can enter the second FQDN with a public domain name that maps to the Netscaler Gateway V server if you're doing uh, access through the gateway. You can also set a callback, which basically is an additional security measure. So it forces the XMS server to call back to the Netscaler to make sure that it's its friendly neighborhood Netscaler. Okay, it's optional, but certainly you can do that. Okay, you can set up your LDAP integration through your web console. Okay, you can uh, set up your enrollment options. So you can send out enrollment emails or enrollment text messages. You can set up your enrollment uh, invitations. So we also have uh, our web console delivery groups. So you can basically set up uh, delivery groups for your applications, set up your uh, deployment rules uh, to filter the delivery groups based on whatever property you may wish to filter the delivery of certain applications on, like uh, actual Active Directory groups or device information, whether or not they have enough free space on their device, that sort of thing. Okay, of course, we have a share file, which is a piece. If you get Enterprise Edition, you're going to get share file. Uh, share file is, of course, a nice on uh, cloud based data management. For IT, it's really nice because you have storage zones uh, that you can set up for your own on premise storage if you'd like, or storage zone connectors, which actually allow you to connect into your already um, file servers. So nobody wants to have to go in and redo all of their SharePoint or all of their existing files in their environment. That's a huge undertaking. So instead of that, we allow you to just go ahead and set up storage zone connectors, which is going to go ahead and map your SharePoint servers into your share file environment. And from there, of course, users have access to everything through share file, uh, whether it's just a SharePoint server or whether you know, you're trying to migrate everybody over to use share file within your environment. Nice centralized management, native device security, uh, reporting, notifications, lots of security features. You can custom brand it so it shows your corporate logo. And of course, you have on-demand sync for virtual desktops, which is also really nice. When you're using virtual desktops, it's basically very nice function. <laughs> okay, why do users like ShareFile? Because it's awesome. Uh, data sync. Uh, Outlook plugin, Windows Explorer, Mac Finder integration. It has large file support, so they can uh, support up to 100 gigs. Mobile content editor. So again, if I'm out to dinner and I was like, oh shoot, there's a typo in my document. Instead of having to download that document to my iPhone, and then make an edit, and then re-upload that document, I can just use the mobile content editor and fix a typo, kind of on the fly. You're going to get mobile access to network shares, like I said. Um, that's not coming soon. That's already there. Sorry about that. Uh, simple, intuitive, collaborative, collaborative experience. Uh, users can manage their own personal settings. Okay. If you give them the ability to as it. Okay. So ShareFile provides a nice platform for mobile devices to store, update and share their information. Okay. Of course, data can then be shared in a secure, auditable, redundant and highly available environments. Okay, it's very, very secure. It actually enables users to send links, okay, instead of actually trying to attach uh, documents, kind of uh, prevents that craziness when everybody starts emailing the same document around and, you know, making edits to it and, yeah, and then it becomes a big giant mess. <laughs> okay, applications can use ShareFile as their data storage repository as well. Okay, again, ShareFile enables all sorts of mobile work styles. There you go, we have... Uh, native mobile apps for pretty much everybody out there okay to access um you get your on-the-go content editor offline access and editing if you need it as well as pdf annotation is available okay so the last piece of this i'm gonna run through quickly um is the netscaler okay, the netscaler is a networking device that provides you 
uh, with the ability to completely lock down your environments. Okay, it gives you scalability and added security. Basically, it comes in two primary offerings. You can get an MPX, which is a physical uh, appliance, or a VPX, which is a virtual appliance. Okay, now if you are working with uh, Netscaler and you're like, I don't know Netscaler, I know nothing about Netscaler, I don't know what to do. How do I integrate it? Well, guess what? We have a wizard for you. Okay, so again, they've integrated it very nicely. So you have a wizard driven integration to your Zen Mobile environment. Okay, it is highly recommended to use the Zen Mobile wizard to facilitate configuration of your Netscaler settings, session policies, etc. Keep in mind, once you've gone through the wizard, you can always go back and change your settings on anything that was created by the wizard. So it's just a nice way to get started. Okay, it's gonna go through and configure all of your common Netscaler objects, which you'll need. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and select configuration for Netscaler with Zen Mobile. Okay, by default, the gateway and um, the Netscaler gateway, which is the VPN, uh, as well as the ability to load balance your Zen Mobile servers are selected. You could decide if you didn't wanna do any of that. You'll also notice there, you can uh, click in and say, I want to load balance my exchange or I want to load balance my share file. Okay, so uh, I will kind of walk you through all of that. Okay, it then asks you what you want your virtual server IP address. Okay, that's gonna need to map to the public IP or NAT to the second FQDN supplied in the Zen Mobile server gateway configuration. Um, again, certificate and LDAP settings should match those on the uh, Zen Mobile server as well. Okay, it then is gonna go ahead and create one vServer created on port 8443 for works store access. It's gonna load balance in one of two modes where we're gonna do SSL offload where the Netscaler actually performs the SSL functionality for you, uh, freeing up your backend servers from that additional workload of performing SSL. Um, or I can just do forward where I just become an SSL proxy and that goes straight through to the back end and the back end is still responsible for all of those SSL transactions. Okay, two V servers are created. Uh, you're gonna get one for 8443 for iOS enrollment and just regular 443 for Android enrollment and all management. And again, you have the option to load balance in one of two ways with your SSL. But by the time you get through your wizard, Okay, you're gonna have one Netscaler gateway, okay, which is gonna be your work store proxy and SSL VPN. You're gonna have two clientless access policies for web proxy configs and three load balancers. One for work store, one for MDM for iOS enrollment, and one MDM for device management. So it kind of walked you through all of that configuration just by using the wizard. Like I said, you can always go back and change your mind. Okay, so here's uh, what it looks like. <laughs> And since I can't share the screen on my iPad, <laughs> okay, I have captured an enrollment demo. So it's really easy for your users to get enrolled. Uh, so once you do that, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna go ahead and download your uh, Works Home from whatever app store. Once you open it up, now this is dependent upon if you've given them an email link. If you've given them an email link, they can just enter their email address to get connected into the environment. So you, it's gonna ask them if they want to enroll their device. They're gonna say yes. They're gonna enter in their username and password. Okay, it's then gonna go through on their first time enrollment and deliver all of the certificates and everything they need. Okay, and they're gonna to install their profile, their security profile, and uh, it just walks them through. And then it says, oh, do you wanna use your current location? Okay, now what's gonna happen is, so I've got all my security policies on my device. Uh, now it's gonna ask me about my applications, okay? And you'll notice this uh, should look very familiar to a lot of people who use you know, our other products. They try to standardize. So here you see the work store. I can go ahead and click yes, I want to add in an application. And here I can see all of the available applications within my environment. I can select which application I want to use. Okay, and it gets populated into my work store. Okay, um, you can also do forcible installation. So in this case, you can actually see down at the bottom on this slide uh, where it's installing Works Web and it's in the process of installing another application. Of course, you wouldn't want to forcibly install too many applications because I don't know how much space people have on their iPads, but something like Works Mail or whatever. So there you can see it's actually installing it so that they have access to all of their mobility stuff. 
Okay, so again, once I have finished my enrollment, you'll notice that for this particular uh, security policy, I removed the camera. Uh, and you'll notice that here it was pre-enrollment, there is post-enrollment where it's actually removed the camera, FaceTime, photo booth. Okay, so I can see that my security policies are also immediately taking effect uh, within my environment. All right, so now Q&A. Uh, so James is asking with Zen Mobile, uh, can you use mixed on-premise and off-premise uh, share file? Yes, you can. Depends on how much uh, you want to pay for in the cloud and your storage zone is, oh, I mean, access is always done through the front end of the cloud, but then you can point it to your internal on-premise storage if you would like uh, with your storage zones. Rob is asking, what is the procedure to connect to the current SQL server when using uh, Zen Desktop Storefront in order to install Zen Mobile? You just point it and then uh, Zen Mobile goes through and creates the databases and stuff that it needs. So you just point it over there. It's pretty easy. Uh, what is the encryption being used and how does the encryption decryption work on a high level? Now that is really dependent. Uh, we have lots of different types and levels of encryption. You can uh, force the NetScaler to perform your encryption. You can do your encryption on the back end. Um, so you have many, many options when it comes to Zen Mobile on what we're doing and where we're doing it. So can you require uh, MDM for corporate owned devices, but offer MAM only for BYOD on the same XMS server at the same time. You know, this was previously not possible on the same Zen 10 servers, but was supposed to be coming. Um, yeah, that's available in our, in our filters. So if you basically flag your corporate owned devices and you deliver different sets of policies or applications to them versus bring your own device devices. So it's a flag you can set uh, and you can uh, do it prior to enrollment. So you can actually include that flag uh, in your enrollment invitations so that when they click the enrollment invitation and it's a BYOD, it basically flags it as not a corporate device and they're going to receive the BYOD policies. Does WorksMail support Office 365? I believe so. That may be one I have to follow up with you on as far as the backend exchange piece. I know we, we do support, and mobile supports Office 365. I'm trying to think if WorksMail can do it. I'll have to double check that. Does WorksWeb support Flash from the presentation server layer? Oh, you're getting into the little app questions. Again, that's what I'm gonna have to come back to you on. I'm not as familiar with our little works applications outside of just, you know, installing them. <laughs> works notes can sync uh, with just exchange. Yes, it can. Uh, you actually put that as part of one of the parameters when you go in and you uh, basically, it, I call it publishing the app. Most people know what that means because you're Citrix. Uh, so when you go in and define the application, you can basically put in your exchange server. Does the quick connect work for iPhones? Yes, it does. And iPads. Works task, does that support Office 365? Again, I'm gonna have to double check on that Office 365 stuff. Send mobile hardware and virtual machine platforms. If virtual machine, uh, do we support multiple hypervisors? Yes, we do. Support uh, VMware, Zen server, uh, Hyper-V. Send mobile support the license server appliance or its own license server traditional. Um, I believe it supports everything for licensing. Uh, no. Uh, so the next one is guessing hockey puck is not required for the iOS applications. It is not. Uh, Multi-user iPad sign-in support. Uh, absolutely. In fact, that's one of the features I really like. Um, you can basically set uh, multiple profiles. So let's say you have a, an environment. Let, let's take a hospital, for example, where, you know, the nurses come in and they check out an iPad at the beginning of their shift. They sign in, it downloads all of their email, everything that they need. Later when they sign out, all of that stuff disappears and another user can sign on and they get uh, their email and all the stuff that they need. So yeah, if it's corporate owned devices, we absolutely support uh, the ability to um, have those types of devices with just personalized settings for while that user's logged on and then everything goes away after. Since the backend components are changing with version 10, does it make sense to scrap nine install that is currently broken and start with a fresh 10? Yes. <laughs> if your nine install is currently broken, that would make sense to me to kind of just start over. <laughs> Can I call Citrix in order to install Zen Mobile? 
um, yeah, talk to your sales guy. I'm sure they will let you know. I mean, I'm not sure if you want Citrus Consulting to come out and do it on premise or if you want to use Zen Mobile in the cloud. So yeah, but you can, <laughs> they'll find a way. Oh, thank you. So Alan says, yes, we do have support for Office 365. So those 365 questions. Thank you, Alan. Uh, can you open multiple calendar or email accounts through Works Mail? I think once you're logged in, you're logged in. I don't know if you can, I'm assuming you could log off and log back in with a different account if you needed to, but it's all integrated with uh, Active Directory and everything. Uh, you stated Works Notes require, actually Works Notes require share file. Um, you have to have a share file account to even start it up. On first time use, it wants that account because it wants to automatically synchronize all of the notes up with share file. Oh, sorry, I should have repeated that question. Um, works notes require a share file or you have the option works notes can sync with share file or it can sync with exchange. Um, so exchange is, uh, somewhat optional, <laughs> but share file is not. So someone is asking if you can shot all iPhones and iPads with uh, quick connect. I'm not quite sure what that question is. So I don't know if you're asking like from a help desk support perspective, if I can shadow them or. I'm not quite sure if you could uh, expand on that question, please. Uh, so Prince, uh, you said yes, and I actually made it all, all the way through the questions. This is going to be the final one. So for uh, remote support for iPhone and iPad is still a little trickier. We do have uh, remote support tunnels, but we can um, fully integrate with uh, what's our go-to support tool. I just drew a blank. So natively, no. Do we offer it if you want to go out and purchase uh, the Citrix uh, support tool? What is it? Go, go to, I cannot think of it. I'm going crazy. Um, it's one of our go-to products, right? <laughs> and I've actually done the integration myself like 10 times. It fully integrates with that. Um, and you can have multiple support uh, tickets open and see exactly what they're doing. Uh, but natively, you, you can have a support tunnel, but it's not going to allow you to actually shadow it uh, while you're performing support. Go to assist. Thank you. <laughs> so go to assist. I totally just drew a blank. That's so funny. Thanks for coming. Hopefully it was worth your time and, and sign up for a class soon so you get free stuff. <laughs> Here's our final information. Thank you so much for attending. You can go check out our schedule at LayerAtraining.com or you can send an Im uh, email to info at LayerAtraining.com or just give us a call. Uh, we're more than happy to help you.